right, welcome back to The Devil in Detail, the Grendel Reread Podcast. I'm Eli. I'm Ben. It's our 57th episode Ooh. in the final Christine Spar Devil's Legacy issue. Wow, yeah, a big one here today. It all comes to this. It's all been leading to this. Yeah, the big, huge battle between Argent and Christine's Grendel. It just, uh, I'm left wanting more, both before and afterwards. Oh, I, yes. I, before we get into uh, complicated feelings about this great book, tell me about your week. You went to Vegas. We, we had three weeks off. We, we had a mini sabbatical for us. We did have a mini sabbat. Um, it wasn't a sabbat. It was a so good for it's me. So good. I mean, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I went to Vegas for my about 11th anniversary with Tanisha. Did some amazing stuff. Went digging, pulled out one of these uh, Grendel cycles because I couldn't find any more of mine. Went to some good comic shops, went to like a bad one, one that was like, oh, we don't take a card and we haven't for 30 years. Like, you're proud of not making did, money? Did I was about they, to they spend a hundred bucks. Did and they have I, good books? No, it was I mean, hundred bucks worth of books at least. Well, I was uh, maybe 50. It, it was it, one of those it, places it that happened had, to be Wednesday and you know, it, it, it was actually event. Tuesday. So it was like, they were all busy. They were doing shit, but there was like oh these, there was like stacks of like four or five short boxes and you just had to like move them and like get under them. Nothing was organized. Every box I found at TMNT was like, this is IDW 45, 46 and 47. And there was like a grip of 45, a grip of 46 and a grip of 47. I was like, why did I? move all these boxes just to see stacks of three books so it was just like one of those places that, that is, had a ton of shit everywhere it's deeply it annoying like, oh my god it, what it, was, a it was annoying story. it was it's uh but, you know vegas vegas prices with new york attitude baby. <laughs> exactly it was really like that um you know i did read this for the first time something i've been wanting to read a long time darwin cooks parker i read the first book of that are Man, there that three awesome. or six or how many Ooh, there's a there's a ton. Man. There is a ton. I would love to read that book. Oh, it's man. beautiful, man. It's real, real nice. Richard Stark, you know, they're based on like a novel series. Yeah. And then also there's a movie that came out with Jason Jason Statham as Parker. Huh. But it's ab- it's absolutely It's not beautiful. called Parker though. It's called like Bullet I think it is called Parker. Bullet Lust. <laughs> yeah, something stupid. It's called Parker. Nah, yeah, it is called Parker. I looked it up. I was going to watch it. This is really good. This is great stuff awesome cartooning i mean yeah. you obviously know darwin cook is the man but yeah that was really yeah, but good. it's cool to see him not doing like right. dc characters which is, for sure you know to get to get more in tune with yeah. you know to do real life pulp. things people and their feelings yeah the the like dark pulpness of it all it was great so did that just uh man i can't speak more highly about this thing this art installation by meow wolf called or Omega Mart, which is the like you go in and it's this like visage of a like uh, a grocery store with all this amazing, crazy different things. And then, you, you know, you look around and you peer around and you see that you like open a closet where like, you know, this is this is like a, a thing for like juices. And on this side, it's, you know, it's a soda um, cabinet yeah. like you would open at a sure. normal thing. But then the middle one you open up and it's a little passageway and then you like take that little passageway and then you're in this giant cavern wow. with like psychedelic colors and then there's these weird little houses and you, if you crawl and look into the the fireplace then there's this like big cavern that you like climb up a rope through. There's just this all this insane shit and, and different passageways to go to and Alex Gray, you know, like did a room and who you may know from Tool album From covers Tool. or string cheese album covers. String cheese. Oh, no Instagram. kidding. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, it, it that's was just funny. absolutely wild, man. So it's yeah, just well, that's Vegas that, well, the way you describe that is absolutely not what the photos say because the photos make it look like it's rows of supermarket where it, all the packages are all wacky, where it's like when you take a sip of water and it turns out to be Sprite, you know, like like the the imagery and the text like really fucked with my brain and the images yes it that was, sounds like a great experience though it was very fun god it was so cool yeah man what you been up to you've been doing some traveling and some tons did, of stuff did some traveling uh yeah did some traveling got did some uh on my birthday i i went bin diving five minutes from my parents house beautiful in a Jesus Christ, in a hoarder's nightmare 
PC repair shop. Wow. I searched for comic shops. And usually there's seven 30 miles east and west, you know, uh, you know, in like uh, by Amherst, Massachusetts, where the college kids are. Mm-hmm. I never really get out there. It's like, oh, five minutes away. And I look and I call and it's listed as Booby Comics. Booby. Booby Comics. And I was wow. like, what the fuck? Like, I thought I was, <laughs> I thought I was confused. And um, I call the guy up and he sounds like, it's out of a store called Nerds for Hire. Nerds with a Z. And huh. it's just PCs taken apart all over. You'd like the place. Yeah, and, sounds um, like it. And he goes, well, I'm going to open up a brick and mortar. I'm going to convert part of my space into brick and mortar in about September. I do have a, uh, what are you looking for? And I said, you know, been diving 80s independent stuff. And he goes, I actually do have a box of that. Come by. And I shit you not, I found literally the books I was looking for. <laughs> I was like, it, like, it, like if he had said, what titles or publishers do you want to find in my random store? I would have said X, Y, Z, blah, blah, blah. He'd say, he oh, yes, it. that's in the one box of comics I've had. <laughs> that's it was amazing. Pretty, it was a, so I had a great dollar haul right next. It was so funny. Um, so, like, what was of, that? What did that entail? Well, what did I find? Yeah. Um, Mirage stuff. I found the first three gizmos. They were fucking amazing. Oh, yeah. So, I got Prime Slime Tales. I got Prime Slime. Uh, I got some Black Kiss, some Richard Corbin stuff, a lot of Renegade Press stuff. You know about Ren- Renegade Press? think so yeah they were an outlaw publisher kind of thing yeah kind of they uh they were done by denny luber who is dave sims ex-wife oh and she was the aardvark publisher and did a million other things i'm sure for like the first five and a half seven eight years of that thing and uh when i guess when i got divorced she started renegade press and so there's a lot of things structurally about those books and the way that they're designed and read and the way the front and side cover and the back ad space works that it, it looks like Cerebus. There's like yeah. DNA from Cerebus and all those in the way that they lay those books out, which is, which is kind of interesting. Gotcha. Um, I did a bunch of tie dye. Yeah, you did. I don't know. <laughs> I it's it's t- filling up the feeds. Bro. I'm making, I'm making uh, <laughs> uh, like two dozen tie dye shirts for my brother-in-law's wedding. And we have five more, uh, uh, nine more. And then I, for my birthday, I also bought some books. And I thought I was getting um, a $5 copy of this book, this Elric book. Right. Uh, on the chance that maybe it would be in better shape than this one is. I already, this is another $5 copy. And what arrived is a box set that even the Michael Moorcock Facebook group people did not know existed. Wow, dude. Nearly days ago, Eli, I had resigned myself to believing that I would never own this collection of books. I had, you know, one or two here and there. And you accidentally have, got the whole and thing. And I accidentally got the whole thing for five bucks, <laughs> and they all go for like $35 to $75. Oh, that's awesome. So that's why you were I, like, this is going to put our yeah, kid that's, through. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what I say about everything I buy. <laughs> when I sell that's the classic. Years, when I yeah, sell 10 years, it was a lot of money. Speculator. This is going to put your kids through college. Speaking of things that put kids through college, let's get into Grendel. Woo! Yeah. Vivat Grendel. It's like the devil is my best friend. On the rose with the pen to the fork end. Or to time end. Like Orion. Jupiter, my kin, bloodline private. Control the whole shit. The wolf won't beef, then we feast off the rip. Behold the devil in detail. Behold the devil in detail. All right, we are back. Another great intro by Manus and Laserdisc. And uh, we're getting deep back into the final chapter of Devil's Legacy. Ben. It's awesome. Yeah, this cover by uh, oh, the Panthers yeah. is so great. It's, yeah. it's again one of those things. I feel like I'm seeing the the wraparound for the first time ever. Yeah. Right, like today. You know, I recognize this cover and it's like, you know, weird and creepy and like you open it up and you see what's going on with like Arjun's limb and his ear and his building. I love how the 
there's like this crazy uh, <clears throat> high angle shot of Ginny's car and yes. Brian hanging out of it. And we're looking yes. straight down in the street, but then it's like super montage composite. I mean, everything here is montage. It is. Yeah. yeah. Like, like uh, the figures on the right aren't in the perspective of that space. And the COP characters are drawn in like this really exquisite, almost like Dave Stevens detail. Yes, with with like the this like colored pencil or Prismacolor like yeah. Matt does. Yeah, the 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 colored pencil work. Some some places it's so smooth that I think what we're looking at is an airbrush tilted at an angle. Oh wow! To give you, if you look at the blue section uh, above Argent's ear. You can sort of see the gradient the oh, spatter. Right. I, it's 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 just like the spatter is like almost too perfect for colored pencil. But then I started oh, thinking maybe there's some crayon in there too. Like look at all these that. people in the office too, man. It's insane. Yeah, you can see the brush mm -hmm. strokes in the yellow. It's it's a really really cool cover. Oh my gosh, you really can, and, and all the yellow windows and stuff. Yeah, so sick. So, so it's like the first thing that I looked at was like this like her flesh. And I was like, what is that? Is that like, is it colored pencil? And I was, I was having a tough time with it. And then it's sort of like what's going on with the blue line mm -hmm. becomes a lot easier for your eyes to focus on oh, yeah. once, you see the, once you see the brush strokes in the yellow. Yeah. Like you can see that it's a painting. You know what I mean? Right. Oh, God. So yeah. well done. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. You know where, where we'll have this kind of uh, conversation is in the next issue the Bernie and Ken Stacy, Stacy, Stacy cover is like a fucking optical illusion. Yeah, so, dude. Oh my god. So anyway, we're not there yet. <laughs> not there yet. So we open in. Now we get the answer to last month's uh, or last issues. You know what is this 2001 type of ad here? Well, here it is, October 1987, the month we make contact. Oh, the that's Kamiko right. Collection. Now you have, uh, do you have the box? Or you have the whole thing. What, I got the whole thing. Is it worth it? Is it worth ten dollars, nineteen eighty-seven? I think so. Yeah, it's like a grip of, you know, comics. It's got a Grendel comic that's available nowhere else, and and mostly what's big for me is like it's got that big poster that's the got poster. all the different Kamiko characters on it, and it's, it's so great. Yes, I do have it right here. Actually, it's wow. the collection, the Kamiko collection. Yes. It comes with the amazing poster. I'll show you. I'll, I'll whip it out the poster. Here. Why isn't your poster framed? Or is this your? I wonder that. One? I wonder that. I want it <laughs> framed. Absolutely. Is it because custom so cool. framing is a is a grift? Wow. I don't know any of these books. Uh, well, you got Robotech. You got Robotech. Mage, you got Grendel. You got Johnny Quest. Nice. I think you got the Elementals. You got Mirth there flying I, out the. Yeah, all right. Yeah, you know them. I know the two that matter. <laughs> Mage and Grendel. And then, I like I said... Another, I saw another uh, Kamiko book I'd never heard of, just like the Doug Wildly one. Oh, yeah. Some some other thing I'd never heard of came across my desk that I thought was awesome. What's oh. this? this? So this, this is has Grendel number with. seven, which I probably just bought while we were doing this because I thought we did. I didn't have it. Justice Machine number three. Star Blazers number four. That might be one of the ones I didn't recognize. Elementals 15. Robotech, the new generation, number three. Robotech Masters, number 10. What a sprawling saga. Robotech, Robotech the Macross saga. Uh, Evangeline. Oh, yeah, that's the one. By Charles that's Dixon. That's the one that, that Mage was gang printed with. Oh, right. You're right. That's the one that they're like, oh, you got this other book. Okay. Jonathan Quest number two by Wendy Peeney and the Dude. Wow, that's cool. No shit. Yeah. Did she write it? Um, that's just the cover. Looks like it's written oh, by the, William oh. Messer and Loeb's penciler, Will Wendy Peeney, and Joe Staten is the anchor. Oh, that's cool. Wow, that must be. But nice. the color was by the Rude Dude. I got my great guide to reading Kamika comics, and here's what you get. Thank you. I almost uh, also got Next Man number three. Here it is, Grendel, Devil's Legacy, oh, Devil's Vagary. Oh yeah, that's oh. the uh, that's 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 great. It's and so also, funny that Kamiko Attractions what? number eight. That's great. Isn't that awesome? That's that's Bernie. That's Bernie. Who? What's on the front cover? For I mean, obviously I want to look at Bernie. But what what the hell is that? Is that Harlan Ellison? 
Yeah, these are like checklists, or there's there. It's basically like the what's next pages, uh -huh. but um, they have like a little thing. There's like a, a Kamiko coming at you, September 1987. Uh, thing about the Kamiko collection, the Black Book. This is basically right around the time. Yeah, this is Grendel number 13. This is this this came out obviously because it's advertised in here. But yeah, yeah it's the exact same time as this. It's so funny that um, that there was a return to Hunter Rose for the first time. You know, at the tail end, at the tail end of this, I feel like one of my biggest wishes of Devil's Legacy is that there's more Hunter Rose and my, my or, or more mention of just what comes before. Right. My suspicion is that that was part of the, the writing challenge in wanting to be different, that part of the like structural agreement seems to be we're going to move complete as far away from yeah. that as we can. It always seems like that's here's what the climax. Matt... Here's Argent. You know, it does seem like that's what Matt likes to do. Is change right. it up. Yeah. He, he's never one to listen or to, to like listen no. to the norms. <laughs> you know what I'm sorry. I didn't mean like the that. beat of his own drum. That's... Right. Exactly. And he's <laughs> he like, this is what you want you me to listen. do. Jeez. Yeah. I'm going to do the exact opposite. You want me to do more Hunter Rose? Well, I'm going to make it completely different. Yeah. I, I think it's, um, and keep it growing creative challenge yeah i mean right. you don't want to go stale and and do you know the elementals your entire life or something well he, he did fables he, you know he did pretty good on that one i, I don't know i don't read i don't read either of these books what do you want to <laughs> it's funny right. with, uh, with the the ending splash on 11 and the opening semi splash on 12 mm -hmm. that argent is kind of just like doing his his magic ritual stuff Right. Well, he's encanting the Moglawi, which is another name for um. Oh my God! I just Maslin. read. It. I just yeah for Maslin exactly. So he's like, or conjuring the power that like created him. He's like getting back to like what originally made him his power, and he's doing everything he can to kind of like bring it all back up. Like, he's got. He's got to fix his legs. He's got to fix them legs if he's gonna have this final battle with Grendel. Sure. And and sh Very and strange. she's ready. Grendel's ready. And again, we have one of these amazing panel breaks with the shadow. Yeah. Like, just I love that. It, yeah, it there's adds... a bunch of different stuff throughout this issue with that. And, and really, here in the Kamiko versus the um, uh, the the Dark Horse, like they take out the whole like Grendel created, written, penciled that whole thing. And there's like, I mean, it re it really opens up the spread a lot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You can see that that weird rib cage. Um, I. <laughs> I, I don't think Argent is uh, developed enough in this book. Um, this this Argent seems to come a little out of left field to me. The one here at the end, yeah, he's just like the one. The one he's like wearing his like jeweled belt, and he's got his uh, his knife, his like Skeletor staff, and his like bat wing candelabra. Like he's had enough. Why? He's probably like. He, maybe he is kind of like losing his mind a little bit like he's, yeah. he isn't he's older he's like hundreds of years old now and he's kind of like at the end of his ropes he lost the use of his legs he's like not on the beat he's not like really he can't do what he wants to do so he's just losing it and it's and, funny that the 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 police like the the stormtroopers yeah have kind of taken a cue from him with with all the savagery and all that stuff right exactly and while they may not look to him the same way they used to like in the 80s they still are looking they're still using him as some sort of guidepost and like you said and yeah. now it's like with the savagery yeah and it, it's it's funny when you mentioned the 80s this story takes place 35 40 years later i mean you know the original devil by the deed took place when they were making this book and this book takes place now. Basically, yeah. Which is crazy. Yeah. All right. All right. And and another thing, um, it seems like the the wording in Christine's writing also gets a little um like more more ragged, a little more uh um symbolic, a little more sure. staccato, you know. So and, and and really as we turn the page here, page two, um he is like almost crazed 
yeah. through these incantations. He's babbling and mumbling these words, uh, how he's, you know, the Moglawai shall live, my curse shall march, my curse, you know, like, and he's like going rabid while like Christine is kind of doing like this, like centering herself, like Tai Chi almost like moves, like getting herself like prepared for battle. You know who he reminds me of in this issue, especially when he like gets, when it gets, he reminds me of Tommy Lee Jones as Two-Face in uh, Batman yeah. uh, Forever. Forever. Because he's playing, I, what I heard is that one of the reasons that movie is so off the rails is that Tommy Lee Jones would not take direction. Gotcha. And he made it his personal mission to out Jim Carrey, Jim Carrey, instead yeah. of doing what Schumacher wanted. Yeah, he hated <laughs> Jim Carrey. I remember that. I, I read some about that. And there's just like, he just reminds me of that crazed version of Two-Face. Maybe yeah. it's the twisted, the way they do that twisted inking stuff on his on his flesh. It looks like he's like been shrink wrapped in latex or whatever. Yeah, it really makes him look savage. And I'll tell you, um, I'm really, I really like Tom Vincent's colors a lot more on this page, at least like, cause I, I love the purples and I love the, the purple highlights and man, especially the way they go up through Grendel's eyes on this. Yeah. Man, he so has, cool. he has a few panels in this issue that are top tier for uh, throughout this entire series. Oh yeah. And it's all, there's, it, you know, the young guys working like at the tail end of an outdated process. There's like, there's some real gold in here. And like, I've never seen a Marvel with DC comic from this era, like except for Lynn Varley that looks anything. Any good. Yeah. Like that, you know, like the yeah. way some of the, sometimes, sometimes I, Tom Vincent, not every panel. <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure. I love how they laid in some of these, like, um, uh, textures in the dark horse either like here on the on on the next page more. page three um there's it's like a carpet texture you know it's and oh, whereas wow. in the kamiko it's just a brown which yeah it's got it's got really nice movement the more distorted it gets you know on the right side um but then on the left it just looks like a shag carpet <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's cool i like collage i'm all about i'm all about collage yeah true um, well, we got Ginny here, who uh, from the Dark Horse to the Kamiko uh, goes from a in the Kamiko an amazing like blue and red running tracksuit kind of feel to like a a dark leather uh, affair where she's. It is so weird. It it looks like she looks like she's wearing. If you if you squint your <laughs> squint your eyes, Eli, it looks like she's wearing a dress that a strapless dress. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. Weird. <laughs> right. It's the same color as her skin. Yeah. Oh God. Oh man. So this starts the back and forth that helps the the pacing of this issue just mm -hmm. continue to be like edge of your seat. You know, back yeah, and forth from Christine to like the 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 fight and the like chase between uh, Ginny and and Brian to to find Christine. Yeah, this is probably the you said this is probably the best paced story oh, in the yeah. series yeah, yeah it's, it's it's so yeah she's, she's like thank you come on come on come on she's like shit, shit 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 where is she? she's like come on already so she so she knocks 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 next page and then you know miss what's her name opens the miss, door again miss ballard she yeah, finally ballard. looks like an old woman right it's amazing she was just as beautiful as Ginny and uh and christine in many of her prior appearances now uh, exactly now still she's beautiful finally, but <laughs> She's like, where? So where is Christine? What's happening? You know, they're they're talking, they're back and forth, and she's like, oh, she just came in and got some stuff, and she ripped out. And she's like, God damn it, no! And then she, she's like, that's it. All right, fine. She's like, you know, or if she shows up, wedge a chair. Like, if she shows up, do not let her leave. I like, please do not let her leave. We need her. Yeah, call me on my car phone. Exactly. <laughs> this is no a story you... where, like, if only you know, if only cell phones existed in this world. <laughs> yeah, I mean they do, but if like we already had that term, you know, it's like it's so very, so close. highly elaborate. <laughs> yep. And so we flash right back on the next page as the battle begins, and Grendel lays a first one where she's trying to like go back and and get those licks in that hunter got. So the first thing she does is tries to cut his back again, right? Cuts him in the back or the side. Mm -hmm. And he's like, ah, and so then he falls kind of like in this twisted pile. And then, yeah. you know, he's there. She's like, I'm trying like be their equal in brutality. 
equal their hate, you know, and then this, this bottom uh, image of Argent, he is absolutely like insane. Like the yeah, most insane. It has like a big daddy Roth kind of yeah, dude. exaggeration on it. Yeah. The, this is, this page is amazing. It really um, is. The, the, the movement on the first three panels, like the glancing arc of splattered blood is just a fucking great. And then this third panel, you you said he lands awkwardly. This must have been what Stacy saw at Anson Reynolds. Oh my affair. god! Yeah, right. As like he that's falls and was like, like, look at the way his back legs are twisted. Mm-hmm. I never really, I never really understood what Matt meant when he was like seeing the wretched creature twisted, his twisted form flailing about. You know, all right. Well, I mean, doesn't she love him? Like, nah, man. Right. He looks horrible. It was gross <laughs> enough that she was like, oh. Right, this is a beast. Like yeah. this is a monster, not he's, a stuffed animal. Uh, he's in his full-on loincloth. He this is. It's just like how you know his attire getting more like feral and voodoo flavored, mm. and the cops getting more like paramilitary. They oh. both kind of <laughs> ramp up. You know, just oh like God. his uh, uh, his hover chairs get. You know, he has five different hover chairs. You know, one, right. One, it comes in handy here in a minute. Now, I'll tell you the last panel on uh, Jeremy Cox here, uh, too. He's got a cool, like, liquid light, light, lighty kind of like illumination on like the sweat or, or the exasperation. Yeah, it's a very, uh, very that's cool. a great, yeah. Acid, acid drenched, super exactly. cool. Exactly. Yeah. I like, uh, I also like the argent flesh on the blades in panel two. Oh, right. Oh, yeah. They yeah, got it's it much both. easier to see. In but yeah. yeah. And then also how the panders like do his rear feet, which we talk about a lot. Mm-hmm. But here they're so bizarre. They're like, they're like hands. Right. Because so, they've kind of like withered, you know, and they, yeah. and not being used, there's not so much muscle on them anymore, you know. So they're, they're, just they're so, skinny and weak, maybe. It's, I, there's just kind of like an uncanny valley sort of. They, yeah. I don't know. They, they, they really achieve like this disturbing argent yeah. thing He's in a way that hopped he, up on Maslin right now, ready to. Yeah. Here's the right, money so shot. Next page. Oh my oh, gosh! Man. Here it is. Here's the, the action. For. The, it's like the Batman Grendel, or like you know those, you know the spread. You know, his equal for it's him. I've always hated the brute force that ravaged my past. And here they come, man. Oh, shit. Yeah, that was a great page. Yeah. And then we really? flash right back to the same exact scene where, or, or did you want to say more about the splash? No, I think it's that structurally it's, it's, that yeah. every time we return to Christine and mm-hmm. she just picks up her <laughs> humble and rambling narration mm-hmm. and you're just like, all right, like she's still talking, you know? Yeah. Um, but then, you're, like you said, it's the, here's the here's the repetition. We're gonna knock, knock, knock. Ballard, Brian. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Next how page. Much, so how much more to it? <laughs> yeah. It's like what? What? She's like Regina. What now? Again? What again? And she, and so Brian's like Regina. What? She was here. Where's Chris? Yeah. And she's like nowhere. And she's like, how long ago? A second. Ah! And so he runs away, and, and it just continues to, to hype up. You know. Yeah. And, and, and we're to understand that this beaming that that that's Ginny's car flying above him like he just yeah. missed her shit that, that's that that's her car so that's right. a cool story and interesting there. very interesting perspective on that yeah the car stuff is about to get lit oh my god Holy all shit, right so next, next page, page we get yeah well we get that classic you know taxi follow that car yeah i need you to follow <laughs> what does it say that red number go go he, and it's funny the cab driver's like this whole city thinks they're in a fucking spot flare Great. yeah and so now they're speeding along in this fifth element style future Blade Runner world. They were flying along, we're zipping across with a flying car. And he's like, Regina. Yeah. It's me. Uh, Jeremy, Jeremy Cox kills it. Oh my God. Yeah, like, dude. like Tom Vincent does a does a fine job. Mm-hmm. With the green like blues. The, I like the illumination. Yeah. The the dashboard lights that come up and, and hit them and, and, and yeah. the face and hands. Yeah. But like everything that Jeremy Cox does here. Just like makes it so exciting. Yeah. The um, especially uh, Ginny's Ginny's face. It re- it just like has so much. Yeah. And, it has and, more pop than most things do in this book. 
Yeah. And, and the color on the lights and panel too, like there, the whip, mm-hmm. the wishing and like, you know how it is, like you said, illuminated and stuff. It's just, you almost can't tell that it's the lights you're following, but man, it's so fast. So, so yeah. cool. And, and I mean, here they're flying, they must be going, I mean, you, you gotta be going pretty fast. They're flying. To like, flying. Yeah. And yeah. he's like, you know, they, they kind of start hovering next to each other and then he jumps across. He's like, Hey, he's my fair weight. And he says here, here. And, and, Probably, probably at that point they just have to touch Actually, just touch not, stuff. And, no, no, they're not moving in the last two panels. Oh, you think they stopped? Says, Whoa, says, I don't know. That last says, panel. Stop. <laughs> Brian says stop. It's me. Oh yeah, I guess yeah, they, <laughs> they they stop and at the, high the speeds. The way she the way she opens the car door. Yeah, they, yeah. Right. Last yeah, right. panel though, it looks like they're speeding again. But maybe something's that's going, to like start going. things back up. Yeah, this is a great page. Yeah, dude. I I love the like you said the whip of the of the cab. Yeah, dude. All right, so then we flash back, and they're they're mid battle, right as Argent snatches away the fork, and he and you know this is her weapon, and he he smashes it down on the ground, and and the battery and the springs pop out, and ha <laughs> he's like, your teeth, your teeth have been plucked. Yeah. Mine, however, are ready at your throat. This and is the one is, where he reminded me of Tommy Lee Jones. Oh yeah, he's like ha. <laughs> Ah, you know he is he's crazy oh my god and, and and again this is the craziest we've ever seen argent because this is this is like argent is is hopped up he's like on this like drug almost this 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 he's on the, he's on the cycle yeah exactly he's he's raring to go and uh, so he throws the pieces back behind him and he's laughs away at her yeah she arms herself with this uh elaborate Sam Keith Sandman looking uh, candelabra, and then when when he strikes her, the poses are like so dynamic that it kind of took me a minute to kind of <laughs> yeah. figure out like what what leg goes where. Oh whatever. my god! Well, because it's like cool. at the same time, like as she smashes him with the candelabra, she, he is going like going this way on the mask and like ripping it off her face yeah. and slicing her. I mean, it really looks like her jugular. I mean, this should be... Well, there's some good... Yes, I totally agree with you. I spent the rest of the page being like, he sliced her throat? What's going on? (laughs) But I want you to look at panel two here between Uh the two editions where Jeremy Cox puts the... He puts the contact burst where she strikes her, but then he does the blood as like blue latex sheen. Oh, right. So they took that cut out. But then we see a little blood still in panel four, but... But you know. Arjun's blood, it looks like hot candle wax coming out of his armpit or whatever. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Very weird. Oh, interesting. Changes Very weird. there, yeah. yeah. Um, let me ask you a question about your Kamiko edition. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Did the, re- on the In the last panel around Argent, did the, does it look like the red, the magenta plate slipped a little bit? Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, it almost looks like that would be a, a like a accent, like an accent, but... It's so cool. Yeah. It looks it's awesome. not it's not in the uh, it's not in my trade oh interesting yeah there were a few subtle changes between between the two all right great all right so then she's, we're back again grendel. yeah high speed chase man they're flying no idea when i woke up she was gone blah blah, blah. this happened blah, blah blah and they're like oh man are we ever gonna find her and she's like ah and he's like drive carefully and it's like ah you know ah. And it's kind of like that ah. that when they get into 2015 and uh Back to the Future too, and they're like, you it's know, Marty like, like realizes yeah. they're flying. He's like, vroom, 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 and he's like, ah. Yeah, and, and my favorite like, is how uh, when she swerves in the last panel, the orientation of the skyline shifts. Oh right! So look at the angle of the buildings and. The, well, that's right. Good, good uh, attention to detail there, Panders. Hell yeah! yeah. Really, really cool. Really cool. And and also panel one two, you can see the like dotted line that kind of mm-hmm. shows where her car is going. It's like spinning around, like yeah, ripping in between. Very so family great. circus. <laughs> oh my god, Blade Runner family circus. And then like you can see a couple in the car, the like front most car, and they're like, Whoa. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they're trying to just try to go to Funky Town, guys. Uh huh. Come on, the Funky Town, New York district. Tom Vincent uh, has the upper hand for panel two alone. Just like that green. The- the green yeah. lights, like it, getting rid of all of that, just like it makes it look like it's three in the afternoon. Right, and less course. like there's a bunch of other cars zipping yeah. around them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is really cool. In Kamiko, we've got the first of three mentions of the Fish Police graphic novel. Yes, we do. That are that are in this issue. <laughs> yes, 
Uh, I I finally found one of the Marvel uh, fish polices. Oh yes, and yes. that was in conjunction with the cartoon that we didn't know existed. And I tried to watch the cartoon of of all of them are on uh, YouTube, so you can check those out. I'm sure they're great. Mm -hmm. Harlan Ellison writes the introduction here, so uh, also his second mention in this issue. That's right. He was he was a Kamiko a Kamiko boy. Yeah, uh, uh, Diana talks a lot about him in the uh, the interview that I did for Wizard about working yeah. with him and how she was a big fan of his before Kamiko, and that was a, I think a nice a, a big get for Kamiko to that turn is, these great. That is know. a good get. He's uh, a that's big, a get. He's a big fan. <laughs> All right, so then we're back in the fray here, and Christine's running. She she flips over his his chair just as she gets the idea, like uh, you know you know he must have burned inside as oh, wow. I am burning. And, and then she smashes like the thing and it tilts and burns him as it flies into the ceiling and no doubt, you know, I, I would think that it would like crash out through this, the roof or something like that and cause like a crazy, like something like that. This is probably one of my favorite panels in the whole series yeah. because, because it's on Vincent. Because I don't know what, Vincent's colors. I don't yeah. know what I'm not sure what Jeremy Cox is doing on uh, 20 years later, but like if it ain't broke, bro, like this is look at the beautiful uh glacier blue on the sound effect and the yes. like the negative space in that airbrushing. Like we got yeah, we he got, did a kind of a cool figure out how they did that. He did kind of a cool thing, uh uh Jeremy Cox, that it kind of looks like the sound effect is like coming out of the fire where he kind of like Ooh. blurred the top of that H and exclamation point, which is kind of cool. But I, I just like how in in uh, the Kamiko the white goes through Argent to make it just it didn't seem like it's just right there. Like, I mean, that fire went past Argent and like blast him back and like, oh my gosh, so good. Well, that's the that's the digital airbrush for you. Yep. Sometimes it goes, sometimes it don't go. <laughs> All right, next page, we see uh, Argent uh, uh, burning and, and falling to the ground, I guess. Um, yeah. And as she dives away for what's left of her fork. Yeah, this is yeah. a very, uh, for some reason, I don't know why, for some reason, this pose reminds me of famed 80s elf artist Barry Blair. Oh, I don't know him. I'm not, eh, it's, it's fine, it's it's fine. It's only real. Look at Jeremy Cox on uh, on Ginny here, bringing back the green light. Uh -huh. that, that looks really cool. Well, this is a really cool like trio shot here. Three panels of yeah. of you like our main our heroes here. It's I mean that's that, that's so well done as we flash between all three worlds that are like being affected. You know, in the in the like Fibonacci like in like the spiral kind of way where we go right from her jump. To her face to Jenny's to Brian's and then around. Like I spent is... a lot of time thinking about why, besides, you know, uh, why Ginny and Christine have like the same face. Yeah. I think it's I think like the subtext that I choose to read is like this could happen to anyone. No, you just need you just need the right pressures. Here's one person it happened to, and one very similar person who it didn't happen to, but she still got caught up in it and it still changed her life. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Well, it, it might just happen to you when you're Grendel's granddaughter too, but then right. you, know, you don't know who, you, who you're getting yourself in with too. Mm -hmm. And so you, you never know who your friend can turn out to be, Ben. So Christine did tell Brian that she was going somewhere. He's trying to remember, yeah, and, like and not the Colorado. Uh, but it's like, uh, the, seemed like the North or something. I thought west. this was funny that like Brian's acting is he's like amused with his own <laughs> yeah. forgetfulness. Yeah, it's funny. Like in the heat <laughs> of the moment, funny. he takes a second of brevity. Like, yeah. ah. <laughs> she said something, dude. I can't remember, you know? Yeah, man. And she's uh, like, Ginny, oh, great. Ginny, Ginny's acting is great. Yeah, yeah they, they not, both are. Yeah, they, both they, they don't. The moment doesn't quite have the sense of urgency. <laughs> Right, that, that story seems like needs, the rest. But it's still yeah. a great drawing. But sometimes those breaths, those breaths of fresh air, are, are like fun in these action sequences. Marvel movies, I feel like, do that a lot. You know. Yeah, like it's. Where... I think you're right because it's it's a very mundane moment, and right. then the next spread is fucking lunacy. All right, let's go. Oh my oh god! My god. <laughs> Absolutely right. The battle continues, and some major, freaking major blows. So, so he is like 
uh, Argent is like, you know, feral. He is rabid, and you can tell. Like here, uh, Jer- or Tom or Tom Vincent makes his eyes green as he's like steaming and rather and and just throwing his arms like yeah. without even anything. And then that's when the glorch happens. She shoves what's left of that fork right into his chest, down through his back and out as Napoleon's. Yeah. I think if I might editorialize a little bit, right. I think what what would help this Argent moment would be like, first of all, a little bit more development about Maguela and the cops and all the stuff. But if he was like, if he was like cracked and like shooting beams of light out of his mm. eye, which is sort of seemingly like what's going on in panel three, you know what I mean? Where like he's got some of those like, spirals and and like skulls that they used actually in the silverback, yeah, like in the he orange was like, here to he the was like sh- leaking spirit energy or something. Right, right. Yeah, to 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 show that he, you know all of these things are making him completely rabid and yeah. And, like a like the wild animal has completely taken over everything here. Look at the uh, look at the Tom Vincent highlights on the blood on Glorch. Mm-hmm. That's a very uh, like unique analog effect. I that was either a pain in the ass or there's a very easy trick to make that. <laughs> yeah, just I don't know what or something. Yeah. He even uh, even uh, Jeremy Cox kind of takes out some of the white circles in the top of the of the blood. Yeah, it's weird. So there's sometimes where it looks like Jeremy Cox is paying attention to and saying, "Oh, if it ain't broke," and then other times where he's like, "Doing it my way, baby." <laughs> yeah. And then I want look, to kill him. Yeah, look at Christine's gray face in Kamiko. Gray, like uh, Harlequin, like lunacy, almost owl-eyed. with the grand little eyes in shadow. Oh, the gray. super yeah. cool. Man, yeah, that would have been cool if she like took some blood and was like, yeah. Like that. Well, you can see Tom Vincent is yeah doing some white in there. Oh, yeah. It's the same. Damn, it's the same effect as on the blood. It must be a. It must be a white. It must be white out over. Must be yeah. Or, over or, uh, Doc Martens or something. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. It's just weird that they would like bust out this one really cool effect for four panels in the last issue. Like, hey, that's it's the that's last the issue, thing. man. It's like, well, it's like when you're ex- experimenting, exploring. You know, uh, you just want to keep, keep, keep pushing, and sometimes it's like, man, I wish you go back and put this, put all this great stuff back in. in there. Yeah. All right, man. Next page. I realize the danger as Argent sets a blow and scrapes her from armpit oh. to to waist, man, and down the leg. Like this is a major. Oh my God, this rips. I mean, I, I wouldn't be surprised if, if some of her organs were, were reached yeah. with that, man. Like, yeah, so it's a very deep, deep. It looks deeper in Dark Horse for some reason. There's like a little more detail. Yeah, exactly. Found Just land. shredding. <laughs> but then the finality is the relief after all. My chances aren't good. Oh, man. So the, this, this these, these four inset panels are great. That first yeah, one reminds fantastic. me of like Pit or something like yeah, I was going to ask you, what does it yeah. remind you of? And I think Pitt's a good answer because it's talking to how it's ahead of its time. Yeah. I was thinking like Keith Giffen or or Frank Miller, yeah, like like Ronin or like some ambush bug shit or Man, something yeah, like so that. So good, like, like yeah. and so uh, you know, I, I try to envision this in my head, like as it playing out. And now, like they're both losing blood, they're both kind of like in and out. There's these like you know, cinematically we see like whoosh, whoosh, like these flashes of black as like these different things are like flashing before their eyes as they're both like, yeah, uh, you know, they're, I think, you know. I think that that's one of the, the airbrush is sort of helping that, especially in the last two panels where there's, yeah. it's sort of like cloudy over the blood or, or reflective or whatever. All right, let's Super continue cool. along here. Oh my gosh. And they both kind of like, they fall to the ground. They're done. Uh, and then history and then, repeats itself. Yep. And Brian's like, wait, I remember now, Dakota. And so the Dakota, bah! she zooms around, she spins around, and just as she's like, oh shit, we're too late. The cops are already there. Vroom, vroom, vroom. They they are landing in like how you say, even more paramilitary, like the most paramilitary looking yeah, it's cars got so the, far. It's, it like, looks like a World War II. Uh, yeah, it's got the know, fighter. 
the the star and it's got the like turret kind of thing there yeah when you were talking about like the the gutters casting shadows you can see it happening to brian in panel two yeah his eyes there's also this little piece of like atmospheric debris in the bottom panel on the the casting shadow inside cast a shadow underneath the panel oh yeah it's crazy such a such a cool uh, like such a cool effect all right cool Oh man! So then all the cops are going up, 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 running in. They're like setting up some, uh, so a blast, some some stuff to blast open the gate. Yeah. There, he's like, "There's Wiggins, Christ! They're gonna blow the shit up!" And then they do. Wiggins is like, "Do it!" Explosion happens. All right, let's keep going. Good, a, oh. g- a good page on both for both versions. The explosion in Dark Horse, where it's all red. Oh yeah, is, is really nice. Okay, but, al- but also notice it, that he, Wiggins is purple lips. That was oh, yeah. a choice that Jeremy Cox does not understand. Yeah, yeah. This no, on, he, on this page. I least. mean, yeah, he's really cold. It's cold out, and yeah, he's, he's got his he, he has his the purple lips. Face gets so cold at night. You know, it's like that metal just freezes. Mm-hmm. Next page, we get the Kamiko blimp real quick. Um, it's an article by Diana. She wants this is really places this in a time. They moved to Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania doesn't have a mandatory seatbelt law. And so this is about seatbelt laws and how she received a letter from the seatbelt people from Big Seatbelt, seeing if Kamiko would make all their artists draw the characters like in cars with seatbelts so as to make like the job of Big Seatbelt a little bit easier. Did and they, and did, I did love that. that. No, I love Diana for that. Like, and I, and I love Kamiko for this. She's like, you know, unlike the big two, Kamiko was founded on the principle of creator ownership. And our respect for the rights of our creators precludes us from ordering our freelance writer and artists to do anything. So like, <laughs> you know, just to, to, to save and maintain their work. So like, as, as much as I believe in this, and, and that's what I think her article is like, we wear our seatbelts, it's going to save your life, do it. But in no way would I ever make our artists and writers do that because. Right. I think also that big seatbelt thinks all comic books are for children who True, learn right. lessons from cartoon drawings right and <laughs> and i think it's, so much. and these books are not really for these are you know scholars so that was an and interesting yeah. I, I saved that till the end because the momentum was like flying here but i was like i gotta go back and check it out yeah all right so we're back and 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 you know they have they've blown up the gate and it's open now and and that's what brad's like now him and him and um um god jenny Ginny, the, <laughs> it's too much action. So they're running in and Wiggins is like, stop them. And, and man, all the, co- and just like everything's happening. They run up, man, they get up them steps fast all the way to the top. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so then they get to the top. Sorry, that was a quick page turn there. We get right next to the top and they're like, dun, dun, dun. Chris, Chris, no, God, no. And and then Wiggins is interesting here. He, he like, he he holds him back. He's like, hold on now. Yeah. Okay. This is one of it's my over. favorite. This is one of my favorite panels of uh, Wiggins. Book. Of Wiggins. I mean, I said that last time. Wiggins. <laughs> with, <laughs> you keep saying I it. I just like, I just like these COP guys that we finally kind of get to see in their glory. They're not wearing like their little naval hats or dressed like plain clothes officers. They're just like decked out. They look like. Uh, space marines from aliens yeah know? they do or from starship troopers or something yeah 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 so they keep getting yeah and they're and they're like grinning and their helmets are enormous and goofy yeah. like it's it's just a very i just want to know more about like this organization it seems like a corporate it seems like blackwater yeah. basically yeah but i don't know how much information there is about that maybe i'll be pleasantly surprised in the weeks to come great interesting yeah and then and we're even going to cover that a1 story that was that it's like a lost story oh. that is wiggins after brian and before oh, cool. the uh incubation all right so so yeah he just he's like stop all right so next page man this is um it's like okay and, and this is kind of like you know this is the last words Christine Spar will ever speak yeah. to, and they're to Brian Lee Sung. And it's like, you know, it's very nice. So many ways that I love you. So this many like, uh, James ways Cameron's scene to love. Yeah. Oh my gosh. 
And so, you know, they're just, that's it, man. They're, they're, they're losing it. Their friend is dead. And Wiggins, uh, Wiggins is actually, it's seemingly he's like for a moment touched by it and, and can, can see that these, these people's friend died. Give him a second here. He has but, a very interesting look on his face as he watches he's like, Ginny grieve. It's a, he's like, he's like kind of, well, the, the coloring makes a big difference because his eyeball is white in dark horse instead of just all being flesh tone and it sort of changes the expression oh, a little bit i think right. yeah i'm not sure this last one has a big co- uh, color difference between the two tom vincent puts the figures just in solid red mm-hmm. and i feel like we're supposed to be watching the sun rise in dark horse i'm not sure i think kinda so cool. yeah i mean i kind of like the red because that it's it's like symbolic of of the death the blood the yeah, war that's occurring right now yeah um but but still like you said it's kind of like the sun is uh rising over this new day and the death of grendel the death of argent and, mm-hmm. and what's to come and so right there and then so the moment's over next page and um wiggins is like all right that's it get these two out of here <laughs> you know and he's like lee sung like i don't have anything any reason to arrest you or miss anastasi but like doesn't mean I won't try to find something to get you guys on. And he's like, yeah. what? And he's like, get him out of here. The transition between um, two and three is really interesting. Look at the way there's almost this, this weird kind of tangent between Wiggins' jaw and neck and the cops' jaw. Oh, yeah. And like his his tie. like Yeah, his, it's a very... Knot. This is really cool. I think I think what's happening here is that because those two figures are sort of placed in the same space, it sort of helps sell the the head whip. Oh, uh, yeah. I think. I, I don't know. But also um, in this, I mean, everyone's a little grotesque in this, but like in yeah. panel three, when you got that little sliver of Wiggins, that like rear seven-eighths of his jaw, and he's uh, all yeah. like uh, yeah, withered and scarred and gross. Yeah. <laughs> that's kind of cool. Yeah, that's a very interesting angle. Hard one to get. Hard one yeah. to get. You know, he does. Uh, he, uh, they, the panders. A case, like a, some of the best panels in this book are the ones where there's like kind of a sense of Chuck Jones or uh, Tex Avery, right? A little and bit. And there's of a little bit of that in this last panel, yeah, where the acting is like very broad and like kind of funny and. Well, and the I, shape I, I of the cop too is his head and shoulders. Yeah. And his, his head and shoulders in the same shop. Yeah, and very like the cool. way Brian's like feet just kind of get dragged away is very funny. And Wiggins just is like, "Oh, get out!" Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wiggins is waving his hands. So <laughs> funny, love it. Yeah. It, so the, and, and Christine's boot is just lying there. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> oh, okay. So all right. So next next page. This is great. Right. So so now now Wiggins is kind of like there. He's alone. He he strikes a match, lights up his pipe, and and you know I almost believe. All right, so these are the units that are coming in, and probably like on the other side of things, other side of the the camera. Yeah, they're just they're all, all talking. talking about yeah, and he's just standing there because he he, you know, had at least some like a working relationship with Argent. Oh boy, I didn't see his cat there earlier. Oh, that's sad. His cat. Oh yeah, there, oh, like, I, investigating. I also. Also, well, that's the problem when you over, overdo the blacks and greens on, <laughs> yeah. on Argent, I guess. Yeah. Um, I think that in, in other, you know, complaints about Jeremy Cox's work on this page, the first panel, like Tom Vincent, wasn't broke. Unbelievable. Look at that blue highlight on the left. Yes. Pink highlight on the gloves, a little airbrush on the match. Woo. Very nice. Even with the purple lips, it looks great. <laughs> Man, so yeah, they're just like, oh, you know, shit, look at him. Is that Argent? I've never seen him. Blah, blah, blah. Like, are we going to do call yeah. him? It's like, oh, right. They've never seen him, which is another, right. Another thing. And then, you know, the in the following scene, when they talk about Argent, it's in a lot of terms of like, we don't know what he is. Like, what do you mean? He's a werewolf. Like, what, what do you mean you don't know what he is? But like, yeah. there's, well, the, he's not really a werewolf, though. The like, mystic. Yeah. He's, he's a, yeah. Who's to say? Yeah. And then, and then it kind of flashes to maybe an hour or so later, Ginny's watching TV and the news, the news cycle has picked up, you know, and, and we've got this newsman being like, you know, Grendel last night, it finally came to blows or they're dead now. 
and and you know at the bottom it's like it was Stacy Palumbo all of it or her the the daughter of the late Stacy Palumbo Oliver the adopted daughter of Hunter Rose who went by the popular designation the grand of Grendel's granddaughter hmm. you know you know what's kind of cool is that if you look at the like the TV lines in that last mm-hmm. panel hmm. they are it looks I think they're done with a screen or a, some kind of a screen in Kamiko and they're they've been redone digitally. Uh, in Interesting. Parts. So maybe maybe those lines like they weren't in the original art, like you said, they were put over. Right. The yeah. It, it looks. Yeah, because they're they're covering both the ink and the color. Right. Right. Oh yeah. Yep. So there's that. We've talked a little bit about those like EC comics, like reverse screen tones, where it's where the image that gets applied is white instead of black. Oh uh, yeah. So it'll white out in a pattern. Oh, yeah. It's kind of the same idea. Cool. cool. All right. So they, they're talk, yeah, they talk a little bit about the logs, but then we flash to Brian in the park. Um, and obviously this is Central Park again, another place that was favored by um, Stacy and Hunter. Right? That's where they would go walking. Yeah. Right and, across, and, everything is right across the street. Mm-hmm. Arsons layers across the Dakota. The Dakota's across in the park. Yeah. The logs there. are the logs are in the park. They've uh, no one can find the oh, logs. They're in Grand Central or something. He gave her the key. I think they're buried here. Oh, really? Or maybe they're... No, wow. she has a key. She gave him a key to a locker in Grand Central. Uh, no recuerdo. Um, so, so, yeah, Brian's kind of reflecting on, on everything that Christine was to him and, 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 you know, just what this whole thing meant and how he's staying in New York. Mm-hmm. And uh, then the next page, we look into his diary, which is like setting up a big yeah. part of, of the, the narrative style of the next and that's the legacy all these characters are kind of writer writerly exactly the photo Um, collage of the notebook is super super cool it's been uh it's it's looks like it's a photocopy Mm -hmm. and um it looks like they were able to lighten it a lot in dark horse yeah very either way it's interesting effect yeah i um i really enjoy this the second panel of him sitting there the wide shot it's a very it's very serious it's like very thoughtful Mm -hmm. mature you know in a book that's kind of like flashy and like kind of michael golden cartoony in a way this is a very like uh serene and serious moment i I dig that i dig it yeah um i I really like the style of the cursive and like i said like we're gonna see that in bernie's like the the ripped out pieces yeah uh, um and that's how I did my uh, story uh, for the Grendel zine that you can get mm-hmm. yourself. Uh, we'll talk about that. <laughs> if you're good, and, um, if you're good, you can if get you're good, yourself. if yeah. you're good. There's a few terms and conditions. They're, <laughs> they're really easy. But then um, we turn to one final last page and we see that page from his journal that he was just writing on with a little sketch of a mask and what may come next. Okay, so the, this is obviously airbrushing of some sort. It's just yeah. hard to tell. I just don't understand how it was done. Uh, was this one page done in blue line? I, I, I don't know. Don't know. His, uh, his, you can see his descent into madness in this last torn away one. He's yeah. you know complaining about the city, blah blah blah, and then it's all torn up. It was shit. You know, a bum just spat at me on my yeah. shoes on the way home, and there's a drawing of Grendel. It's like, He's oh like, boy, oh man, that was just what I needed to oh, put me over. Oh man, all right, the end. And, and then, so and, then it's, and then it's really it's about New York City, in a right. way. Yeah, you know? almost as if like in a strange way, New York City is like the, the other character. It's like its own character. I like that joke. They always make fun of that in movies. All right. So that's that's it for Christine Spar, man. And we are about to dive into, uh, so what's it called? The Devil Inside is the next three issue, right? Yeah, three issues. Yep, three so issues. So let's, uh, let's, let's reflect on this one. What, what do you... Man. Did you like it? It's your second full read through? What, what, yeah. What, I, um, what do you think? Honestly, for me, the star has been the panders the whole time. The art, yeah. the 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 panel breaks, the creativity, the the you know the young these young men, you know, doing something completely different with this comic that we love, and Matt as well, like trying to do the exact opposite of of Hunter Rose and of this 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 
together male character uh, who's, who seemed to have it all put together. But here we see kind of everything flipped on its ear and we get just, just this colorful, fluid, just beautiful comic that I, I mean, I really enjoy. And again, like I said before, had an effect on me that I almost couldn't and didn't know about on my art style. I mean, interesting. What about you, man? I am reminded of, I think it was the week, maybe a month ago or so when we did the eighth, I don't know, it was maybe the eighth. It was an issue. It was an episode where we were clearly like, not like in love with whatever it was. And uh, God bless him. When Matt shared the post, all enthusiasm, he described the book as uh, humble and rambling. <laughs> that issue, and I think I think no, the whole the whole series. <laughs> oh, okay. And I I think that's not a that's not a bad way to look at a work that's thirty almost thirty five years old, done by very young. Green, I mean, the Panders couldn't, they were teenagers, you know, right. babies practically. <laughs> um, I think, but with that, a hell of a lot of talent. I think that if I think that a follow, look at how much Diana's story does for this story, right? Right? So, I think that with a little like creative engineering, you can find the places in this book that need that would benefit from um, being developed or explored or whatever so that the whole kind of becomes without changing any of this just the intent the plotting and the history in the world is a little bit clearer Agreed. I think yeah. I, I think I don't think that that's off the table you know, that, that some revisitation of the time between, you know, more on Christine's earlier life or the time between Devil Child and the beginning of this book. I mean, I would love to just see the Donahue stuff, if nothing else. Exactly, yeah. Like or a more prelude Anson. to this. I mean, or... Yeah, like I've made, all, I've made all kinds of complaints about what is and isn't in the story. It's just that Grendel months. is like not in that, you know? <laughs> but like... <laughs> You never know. He, uh, Matt's creative enough. He, he'll he find a way to get it in yeah. there. You know, maybe, I, I, maybe there's other people that ran around trying to, you know, maybe there's someone did a crime spree and wore the Grendel masks or something like that. And I just want to, I know, just want to be clear about what's going on in this story. Husband in her life. Yeah. 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 There's always more. I mean, there's always more, you know, that's a, always more. That's, that's the best part. <laughs> Yeah. Ah, great stuff, man. I, I'm really excited to get into the Bernie stuff as always, but um, yeah. I'm excited next week. We do have the panders on, so we're going to hey. just chat with the panders and we're going to get deep with them on everything. Uh, um, Christine Spar, everything, Grand everything, Grendel devil's legacy. And um, so thank you guys so much. Again, I am working hard on this Grendel zine. It, it looks amazing. We've got some original stories. We've got some amazing art from the Panders, from John K. Snyder. Um, some very cool stuff to share with you guys. So leave us a five-star review for us on Apple Podcast. Uh, it really helps us out and it will get you a zine. So leave us those reviews. Uh, subscribe here on YouTube down below. And uh, we're going to get these zines out in a boot as soon as we can give us a few weeks so for me eli ben anything else you'll be working hard on the grendel zine i'll be working hard on not trying to make a mess with tie dye in the backyard i die all right thank you all so much until next week vivat grendel and keep on grendelin special host the panders <laughs> <laughs>